Alright, hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today I wanted to go ahead and update you guys with the Grim Dawn Rot uh, character progression. So this is the Boson, aka the Cold Zon, uh, since we are playing a Cold Arrow build. So previously I told you guys I was going, I think, Amazon and Sork, but Sork actually got nerfed in a most recent, like they actually just dropped the patch and pretty much gutted the type of build I was playing. So I wiped off my off spec with a mod called Grim Dawn Defiler, I think, and I put in Paladin. Paladin and Barb are both very good support options. So basically I've got Paladin pretty much solely for Conviction right now. So Conviction is really good because of the minus defense along with magic minus uh, elemental res, which is perfect for us. Um, the nice thing is that the exclusive skill here, Conviction, reduces their defense by a percentage, which means it scales really well into late game. Then over here on Amazon, we have essentially crit maxed, uh, which stacks with a regular crit. I've got dodge max at the moment. I'm going into avoid now. I've got evade almost maxed. One point penetrate. We will max penetrate later when I get my uh, bow because it converts piercing into cold, which is really nice. Uh, one point pierce, one point retreat, which works now. It gives us total speed. Uh, and then one point Valkyrie because it's really good and can help proc devotions. Then. Um, in my devotions, this is kind of a mess. I don't really want to cover this because there's just so much. Uh, but basically, the standard is I've got Ultos for reduced target elemental resistance right here. I don't know if Ultos stacks with Viper, which also reduces elemental resist. But that's something I have to figure out. Then I've got Leviathan because Leviathan gives really nice buffs. I don't use Whirlpool anymore because I don't have the devotions to proc it reliably. And it's just not really necessary for me right now. Um, so we're basically looking for raw stats. I've got Elemental Storm on my Merc, so he shreds flat res. I've got Rumor on my uh, actual shot, which reduces cold res. And then I have Hourglass for just the passives because of the reduced slow and the reduced basically everything which helps really well since the build is pretty like really squishy at the moment uh, and right now i'm working my way into eye of korvac uh, because of the crit damage scaling and the attack rating but i will most likely get this eye of korvac proc and swap something out for it so i just hit act five and i'm in hell difficulty now the build has picked up quite a bit um, to talk about the character progression a little bit, I basically used Rune Ward bows to level. So uh, I started off with... So for my chest piece, I start off with smoke. And then for my ranged weapon, I believe I started out with edge. No, not edge. I don't remember. It's in the video I showed it. Maybe it was Zephyr. No, I didn't have Zephyr. Maybe it was edge. I think, I think it actually potentially was Edge. Um, I think Edge just got buffed, so I got confused because of the patch that they did. But um, then from Edge, I went to Harmony, and then I ended up getting a dropped bow. And then I found a set bow for uh, this one, which is pretty crazy. Um, it, it's just really crazy compared to my current bow. And I got super lucky and got a two-piece set. Which the set is really nice, actually. I think I'm going to work towards the four-piece set. Because the goal is to craft this bow. Uh, this is going to be a nasty bow for the build. It's going to make everything absolutely flipping fantastic. Uh, it's just the grind to basically acquire this bow. Uh, I do have the uh, cedar bow at the moment. I think I can almost make a low rune. Jaw is going to be a grind. But I just, just got into endgame hell right now. So this is going to be kind of fun. All right. Let me go ahead and show you guys how the build clears at the moment. This is a right-click build, so if you guys are not really interested in that style, this is not the build for you. Pretty much everything gets frozen. Like, literally pretty much everything that's not a boss slash rare is usually permafrozen, which works well with Paladin's Conviction because Conviction is 13, 13 meters. So it's about... It's about, like... Uh, almost two-thirds of the screen. It's pretty big. Um, so it hits to like about here. Uh, yeah, like here. It just takes a little, like a second for it to apply to them. But like I said, the other option is going Barb. Uh, Barb has stat power creep, and Paladin is the opposite. Paladin just reduces other targets' resistance. He, Paladin can reduce other people's stats, whereas Barb inflates his own stats. So... 
Barb would do a lot less damage at where I'm at now for my spec, but it would be more tanky and it would need to scale. Um, the reason why Paladin works so well is, like I was saying before, because of the Conviction minus res and the Conviction minus defense allows us to just scale really, really well. But you are very squishy because unless you're one hand shield, Paladin does not actually really benefit you much. In terms of defenses, of course. And then I would say another source of where I got a large damage increase was crafting this relic, which is the Death Chill. Since the Death Chill aura gives us flat cold damage, flat cold is very good for the build. Right now, we're working on scaling our crit damage and our accuracy still. Um, since I thought I thought I was going to be fine with like 3k attack rating, pretty sure I'm going to need like 5k even with Conviction uh, to be able to properly hit some of these endgame guys. Or properly crit, should I say. But I like this. The playstyle feels really good. And when I get the multi-shot uh, for Ice Arrow, it's going to be phenomenal. Like the clear is going to go up. It's going to get so much piercing. I'm really excited for it. I don't know if I can link you the build. If, if I can put this in the calculator, sure, but I'm not sure if that's actually going to work since this is a mod. That's why I'm creating videos like this, so hopefully people can follow the videos and get an understanding of how I'm playing it. Now, for people who don't really know anything about this and are just going to comment like, oh, this looks boring, you just one-shot everything, that is not the case at all. You, you work and you strive to making your character be able to do this. However, you know, bosses have millions of HP. Uber bosses have quarter of a billion of HP, along with all the different things that they do as well. And the leech that you see... With about 3% life leech, you can pretty much mimic what we have. So here's a here's a star guy. You can see what our damage is going to look like. Assuming he doesn't kill me here. I actually could barely crit him. That's weird. If you see my health dropping a lot, it's not because mobs are hitting me. It's because these red guys explode on kill. Um, so that, that's why it looks like I'm taking a ton of damage. Although, don't be deceived. If I stand still, I'll probably die instantly. But we have a really good dodge right now. Like an acrobatics build in Path of Exile. There's another rare over here somewhere I saw. Oh my god, what is this fucking stun lock, dude? We're gonna have to make sure we don't get stunned endgame. We're gonna have to, like, figure out what to do for that. I know there's a- I know there's a rune word for it. Yeah, it really does have a nice pace. It's- it's faster than standard Grimdong. Of course, you could increase Grim Dawn via Grim Internals, but it's not to the point of like you blow up screens at a time. You can, however, do that, but that would be with very specific specs. Um, that's really all I could think of. I think it was called Grim Dawn Defiler or Grim Defiler. How would this mod be for a person that doesn't understand how Grim Dawn works? Well. If you have a base understanding of Diablo 2, you'll be great at this. If you have a base understanding of Grimdon, you'll be great at this. If you don't have an understanding of either, take the game at your own pace. It's got loads of content. Don't rush your way through the game. It's got hundreds of hours of content. 
The only people who get bored of this game in like a couple of days are people who play it very quickly, like, you know, myself sometimes, and are just zooming through with an OP build, but you're not really enjoying all aspects of the game at that point if you're playing the meta. So, you know, just play the game the way you think you're going to enjoy it, really. Personally, I like to struggle. Struggling is fun for me. It's part of the game. Struggling shows that there's improvement to be done with your character, and character progression is the reason why I play video games. So I like it personally. And the, the difficulty doesn't really start until uber bosses and health. So if you're playing the game and you're one-shotting everything at the beginning, chances are you're not playing on veteran slash you're playing a spellcaster, which is fine, but just know that there is a lot of content with the game, so the game may not feel balanced at all aspects of it, but note that it's it's balanced mainly around end game, I would say. There's just too much to try to balance in the early stages. That's why Diablo 3 is a one week adventure, yeah. Because, yeah. While in Diablo 3's case, it's more that a lot of people like myself even, I got bored after three days because after acquiring all the pieces you want, you're just acquiring the exact same piece but with better gear. And every time you level, there's no brain power towards anything. It's just five primary attributes. Oh, kill the overseer. Here we go. I'm going to I'm going to try to tank one hit for you guys, okay? Shank, can you hit me please? Dodge? He stunned me. Oh. Well, I guess he didn't get to hit me. I tried. Alright. So, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and run down my gear real fast so you guys can kind of take a glance at it and see kind of what we are working with. Not all of our gear is very good. Um, I'm just trying to basically get to end game. I'm not rushing, but... I'm just trying to get to end game so I can start finding like really good gear. My biggest gripe with Grim Dawn is that gear is so impactful. You can find yourself constantly re-rolling a bunch of different shit and then you just get stuck not really playing the game and you're just messing around with your gear and there's nothing wrong with that. But I prefer to mess with my gear when I'm higher level because it, it it's more permanent then opposed to just constantly swapping my gear over and over and over again. Seventeen hundred percent cold damage. Dodge chance forty nine percent. Ah, that's pretty good. That's where it is. Slow resist seventy five percent. Freeze resist seventy five percent. Trap resist seventy five percent. Life leech resist minus twenty five. We gotta work on that shit. That's not very good. All right. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. I uh, hope you guys had a wonderful time. Don't forget, if you're curious on the game, it's called Grim Dawn Rot, Rot for Reign of Terror. You can find the Reign of Terror Discord, where they basically will help you with anything that you need to know. You can also go ahead and just Google Grim Dawn Rot slash look at my previous video I put out, um, which basically covers more of the mod. Anyway, take care. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Remember, if you liked the video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget, you can catch me streaming live every day, except for Sunday at twitch.tv slash pox.